Extraordinary Times. Well, the reason we have all these board games out is in honour of Dr Phil Hammond. Now, he's a comedian and an NHS doctor, and he wants to prescribe us uh, five portions of fun a day. He joined us now from uh, Somerset. Thanks for coming on. How important is it that we guard against depression and anxiety these days? Well, I think it's really important. Generally, we know our mind and our body are uh, inextricably linked, and so... If you're very stressed and anxious, it can actually increase your risk of getting post-viral fatigue and getting a worse viral infection. It's very hard not having any fear at all because it's scary times, but I work in the world of post-viral fatigue, so I treat young people with severe fatigue who often have to self-isolate because they're so tired. And I talk to them about their daily clangers. Now, your clangers stand for connect, learn, be active, notice, give back, eat well, relax, sleep. They're like the daily pillars of health or the daily joys of health, and they're really important, particularly connection. We're social animals, so we like to feel that we're, we're part of a, a... We belong to something. We're like leaves on a tree, and it's really important that we connect even though that we're isolated. So although we talk about social distancing, what we should be talking about is personal distancing. We can't get close together, but we can still connect with each other. We know that learning is really important for your health. Uh, we know it's not just learning about the virus, but you might learn a new skill while you're self-isolating. You might learn how to strum a guitar or how to prune a hibiscus or any sorts of things. You might learn how to cook. Uh, we know you need to do some activity. You have to keep your distance. I have two dogs. You can hear them barking in the background. I'm still able to take them over the Mendips. Uh, and I notice the world as I go by. So people who are surrounded by green space, they take time to notice the spring flowers. They fill their minds up with the beauty of the world around them. It pushes anxiety and fear out of the way. Giving back to others is vital. We know the elderly are socially isolated. And when you give back to others, it actually makes you less anxious because it gives you purpose in your life. Eating well, you've got to get what you can get from the shelves, but eating a variety of different foods, a bit of fruit and veg, really important. Then relaxing, come off the media, come off the screens. You don't have to watch too much news. Get in a hot bath or have a hot shower and relax. Listen to some relaxing music or to an audio story you like. And try to prioritise eight hours sleep a night. Your body clock likes you to go to bed at the same time and get up at the same time every day uh, if you can. And if you do your clangers and have five portions of fun on top of that, that's a good way of structuring your day. And the portions of fun just need to be little things. You can't go on your big holiday. You can't go on your sports holiday. You can't go to the pub. You can't do the things you used to do. But what are the little things you do in your life? It may just be looking at your cat's whiskers. It's the, the wonderful thing is that pets don't pass on coronavirus, so you can hug your dog. The damp snout of a Labrador against your thigh is really good for your health. You can't. Uh, you... And above all, we need to... To live Can't in a culture of intelligent kindness where we look out for each other. So th those are my top tips. I use them anyway for patients, but I think they're more important now. Uh, I, I had one well, day off this week, actually, because we're trying to work less hours in the office, and I did watch television from 7 in the morning till midnight, and it is very depressing when things are coming at you. So I, I agree, take it in small doses. But do you think the elderly will want to self-isolate? Very often they're through a generation who've been through a lot of crises and will say, look, um, you know, I, I know the score, but I want to live normally. Well, they may or may not. It's interesting, isn't it, is that we're making the sacrifice to, to, to help the elderly and those with existing health conditions. Some of them may not. I mean, I say to the elderly, it's really important that you make a will. It sounds a bit grim, but make a will. Do your lasting power of eternity, uh, attorney. Sorry, not eternity. Freudian slip. Uh, and talk about your advanced care plan. So under what circumstances would you want to be resuscitated? Under what circumstances would you like palliative care? And once you've done those three things, it actually makes less uh, death much less frightening. Uh, and my auntie Queenie used to say, she was Australian, she used to go, Philip, the moment your sperm meets your egg, you join the queue for death. That's not being grim, it's saying that death is nature's way of recycling, so it's going to happen to us at some stage, and it may be that the elderly are the most relaxed about it all. But the same rules apply, you don't want to be passing it through the care home or passing it through your friends and family, so they should adopt the same social distancing. But I think you're right, it's unlikely they'll want to be locked up for 14 weeks, so we may need to find clever ways of connecting with them that don't spread the virus. OK, Dr Phil, thank you so much. Uh, stay well, won't you? And thank you for talking to us uh, from your lovely home in Somerset.
Can I just quickly say, uh, David, well done for social distancing from Alex. I was watching the Prime Minister at his press conferences, and they're all scrummed together, all close up together, and you and Alex are socially distancing, so you're setting the right example. So well done to you. You get a big plus from Dr Phil. Thank you. And I'm a coward. That's, that's why. That's the biggest reason. Thank you.